under your eyes and so many gray hairs. Okay, okay, thanks a lot. It's just this Comic-Con thing's coming up and we have to have a reel, but we don't have anything. What's a reel? It's like a minute or two of really cool animation, special effects, celebrity cameos, basically a whole bunch of things we don't have. Oh, is that all? Don't worry, we've got you covered. Well, good talking to you, Ryan Reynolds, but I've got to go now. My show's starting. Oh, hello, audience. Say, do you like really cool animation? Or how about mind-blowing special effects? Well, you're in luck. On the Weather Girls local news broadcast, we have all that and more. We've got fancy cameras. Hey, Momo. Is that a 4K HD camera? Of course not. It's at least a Zillion K IMAX 3D zoom camera. We've got devoted fans. And no big deal, but we've got celebrity guests. Where are my dragons? Unicorn stickers. Fast rides. Cool sunglasses. What more could you want? Nothing. Hmm. That was embarrassing. We definitely cannot submit that. Uh, yeah, definitely not. Momo, but Emily said, shh, don't worry about it. That's Emily Watt. So I'm dying to hear how did the Weather Girls come about? Oh, so, The Weather Girls is a little show that I created about, I started making it about a year ago, um, and it's just a story of three little girls who consider themselves to be media moguls, and they put on this news show from their bedroom to the audience of their stuffed animals. And, um, but prior to starting that show, about a year ago, I had zero animation experience. Like none, never an animated GIF, nothing. Um, so. I just kind of stumbled across this Adobe Character Animator software. I saw on YouTube a little 10 minute demo on how to rig up a basic puppet and I kind of thought, well, let me, let me give that a try. I'm not the fastest person to learn new software, so um, if I can learn it, you, you can learn it. And so I, kinda, I was just hooked after that. So I want to encourage any of you, if you have any interest in animation, 
you can do this, you can learn it too, and um, you know, even if you're starting from scratch like I am, maybe you're a writer or maybe you're an illustrator, but you've got some kind of idea in your head for a series or some type of project that you'd like to work on, then I think even being able to do some of this basic animation yourself can kind of help you portray what your idea is, get other people on board, potentially get funding, um, and put together a pitch. So I think, you know, I think it has a lot of uses for anyone that, you know, whether you want to be professional at it or not. So I, you can do it, and we're all here to help you get started. Do you, who does the voices? I do all the voices you do on all there. all the voices? So, <laughs> oh my goodness. So that really is kind of a, a one woman show. And so it proves even if you're really starting out and it's you yourself and that's all you've got, you can do it. So I just record it and it's a little tweak in um, Garage Band. It's a, um, a little voice modulator to make them a little more high pitched. But you can see they all sound a little bit alike. But that's because it's just me tweaking it a bit. Wonderful. Well, to your left is Lynn Mitchell, and Lynn got her start in print publishing um, and does children's books and a lot of other things. And, and like, I mean, you start out as an animator, is that right? Right. Yeah. So we're, we're, we're going to start your reel. Adobe Character Animator helps me bring my characters to life. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Like a diamond in the sky, twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages. I am Bernie, the Magnificent. Watch me pull a rabbit out of this hat. Abracadabra. Rabbit! Abracadabra! Ah! Rabbit cadabra! Ah! Not water! Not water cadabra! Ah! No! Stop! Ah. I should have been a dentist. <laughs> yes, yes, wait, 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 wait. Oh, 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 uh, uh, I'm late, I'm late, I must go animate. No time to say hello, good boy, I must go animate. <laughs> well, <laughs> So, Lynn, I remember the very first time I saw the Dormouse, and I think Victoria and I both were like, whoa, that's such a cool puppet. That's so cool. So, I'm curious, can you tell us a little bit more about that puppet and, and some of the physical puppets that you've made? Sure. Um, I spend so many hours at the computer doing, whether I'm doing 3D or character animator, sometimes I just have to get off the computer and make actual physical props. <laughs> because I'm an artist who can take a lot of different mediums. So. Finally, we came up with the idea that we could join the kids in with it. You know, they're, they're old enough now that we can get some costumes, get a story, create some kind of book using character animator and photography and just make it a fun family experience for us now. So it's fiber, uh, wool fiber that you use a little needle and you poke for many, many hours <laughs> just to get those shapes and things. But it's very meditative and it's a good thing to do when you have three kids. <laughs> well, they're really beautiful puppets. They're really awesome. beautiful. Um, so... Uh, to your left, actually, is um, Katie Weber, um, who's doing a whole bunch of different kinds of things. And most recently, we're going to get to see a little bit of um, Sherlock Gnomes and what was done with a live stream. So let's see her reel. All right, boys, everybody to the places, like the horses to the traces. <laughs>
Hello, Internet. It is I, Sherlock Gnomes, uh, London's protector of garden gnomes, the world's first consulting detective, and today here to answer all of your questions, queries, mysteries that you may require. Our next uh, question uh, comes from uh, Andrew Assad who asks, how did you become such a great detective? Ah, Andrew, very interested in an origin story, I see. Uh, well, you see, Andrew, it all started in a factory, a factory where gnomes were being made. Uh, I uh, was manufactured, and uh, not with all of this fabulous intellect, uh, but uh, much like any other gnome. Uh, but it was a, an accident on the line. I fell off into a pile of books in a little nook of the factory. And uh, I don't know where you want to begin. There were so many things there. Do you want to start with Sherlock? Sure. Tell us a little bit about that. Sure. Um, is this working? OK. Um, so Sherlock uh, is a project that I just completed with um, the ad agency that I work at, uh, Pixel in Los Angeles. And we did it for the home release of the Sherlock Gnomes movie. So um, we did a Facebook Live event where we had uh, viewers ask Sherlock to solve their mysteries. And we did it for about a half an hour and we got a really talented actor, as, as you heard, um, who was just answering questions off the cuff. So that was a really fun, awesome project to work on with Character Animator. How'd you get started with Character Animator? Because I remember an earlier project. I first used it professionally um, when I was working for the Chelsea Show last year on Netflix. And we did um, a satirical vid video, a uh, political video called Build a Wall. And we did this little um, Wally the Wall character so um, I rigged him up and used Character Animator for that. And then after that, it was pretty much whatever project I could find to use it on. So and were you doing animation, though, before you found Character Animator? Yeah, I've been doing character animation for almost 10 years. So I was mostly using After Effects and um, rigging and animating manually. But clearly, this speeds up the process a lot, especially the lip sync. Yeah, cool. <laughs> So to your left is Ashley Postaway. And Ashley, you got started at Warner Brothers Classic Animation. A million years ago. A million years ago, <laughs> all right. Um, but you are the founder of uh, Renegade Animation, and you're an executive producer. Um, do, you, do you do any animation anymore, yourself? No, and, no. I, and I never did. You never I, did. So you I like to say, if story. I can own an animation company, anybody can. <laughs> uh, right. So my business partner, Daryl Van Sitters, is the animation director, and I'm the business side of things. All right. Well, I'm going to come back and ask you a few more questions about sure. that, but let's see the renegade wheel. And they've been using character for a while. We got our entire lives ahead of us, free to go wherever we want to go.
actually use Adobe Animate as well. Yes, right? so that's the backbone of our pipeline. Right, which but we love. But along comes character animate. Right. So what <laughs> happened then? Well, um, we were privileged enough to be working with you guys on many of the early, early iterations and kind of kicking the tires with some of our talented animators and crew members. And then um, you guys invited us to do the new user experience, which yes. I think we're going to see a piece of. Yeah, we are. Here. So we, we wanted to have something to help anybody who's getting started in Character Animator know what it is. Um, and so you'll get to meet Dr. Funkenstein and Andrew right now. Hello? Somebody order a pizza? One pepperoni, extra cheese, 22.50 plus tip. Oh, a tip. Well, how about a whole bunch of tips on how to use my latest and greatest invention, Adobe Character Animator. Anyone can use Character Animator to pump their creations with precious life! And today, Andrew here is going to help me demonstrate how. I should really probably get going. I have a ton to deliver. <laughs> hey, it worked! It's alive! To your old self, I see. Well, I think that's enough science for today. Say goodbye, Andrew. Goodbye. Um, they really did push the envelope with Character Animator when we when we worked on that together. We probably weren't quite ready, but they made it happen, and they really showed us what could be done, and um, and gave us lots of future ideas too. So that was pretty great. Yeah, thank you. It was a privilege to do that, and it was fun. And one of the things that our team members said was they would hop on the Slack channel and be like. We've, we've come to a point where we can't figure out what to do or it's choking or something like that. And the Adobe team would like chime right in. They actually taught us something because they were always excited when we found a problem with the software. And I'm never excited when our clients or people find a problem with what we're doing. And they, it's just like one more thing for us to fix and learn and do. And it was really a joyful process on both ends, even when we were deep in problem solving. So that was really fun as well as um, you know, creatively fun. It was just intellectually really challenging and fun as well. So. Well, I think that's a great point. Um, for any of you that are getting started in Adobe Character Animator, we want to hear from you no matter what's happening, whatever you're struggling with. There's several of us here tonight. Come by and get our card. You can get in touch with us anytime. And if you don't know how, just go on the forum. We will respond. We're actually the ones responding on the forum. So we'll get to you and we want to get your questions answered. Um, so I have a really big question for you. So. When you're looking to hire animators, what, what's one of those big things you look for in, a, in an animator? Uh, and do you hire a, brand new animators? Yes, we do, actually. Um, we have a joke at Renegade that we're actually, a, we're a home for diamonds in the rough and disgruntled veterans of the industry. <laughs> and we don't have anybody in between. And it's kind of true. We have a Renegade employee right here, Steffi. Thank you for joining us. She's on our editorial staff, so she was part of cutting those uh, pieces together. Um, you know, for us, it always comes down to the work. So we love to see a portfolio that is full of, you know, the work that you're currently doing or have done and that we can see. Um, what our director looks most for is can, can, can we learn something about the characters through the drawings that you're showing us? Like it, design principles and all of that are obviously necessary, but there's something beyond that that is the key to animation, and that's that acting and that life and that story behind the characters, whether it be in a storyboard form or a character design or, or anything like that. So we're always really looking for, um, for that in, in our uh, art portfolios that we look at. Cool. Um, one of the things I think is great about working in the animation industry is there's lots of different kinds of jobs, like your job or director or writer. There's Tons. a lot of different things. Um, and to my right is my amazing colleague from Adobe, Victoria Nice. Victoria is product manager for After Effects. But before she was product manager for After Effects, she had a long history as an animator. Yeah. So is this microphone working? No. I'm going to steal your mic. Here we go. <laughs> We're going to share. All right. Yeah. So I was a motion designer for a really long time, for about a decade. And uh, I actually made the jump from using the tools to working on the tools. I started building my own scripts and extensions and things like that 
but I miss motion designing sometimes, and so I try to find ways to sneak things into the products themselves. And so instead of showing you a reel, I'm gonna show you the only animation I've actually gotten to do lately, mm -hmm. which is the secret credits from After Effects. <laughs> and ev every release of After Effects has secret credits hidden in the application. I will. Come find me after, I'll tell you how to find them if you're interested. Uh, and every, every release also has a food pun code name. So this is our 25th anniversary, so this one is Anniverse Celery. And you'll, you'll see why that matters. <laughs> I mean, I think one of the things I'm curious about, making that switch from animator to product manager, how has that been for you and, and what's it like doing that? Yeah. It's a very different role. Uh, one of the biggest changes is actually that instead of basically working in a room by myself, I have to talk to people all day. Uh, I'd get home from work when I first started and be like, I do not want to have a conversation. <laughs> uh, but there is still a lot of space for creativity and uh, product management is all about setting the roadmap, figuring out what do we need to build, what do our users need, and I love nerding out about animation, and so my job means I get to go out in the field, talk to artists, and that's awesome. I love that part. And you were also the first product manager for character animators. Yes. So I'm just getting a 1.0 started. Can you talk about that a little bit? So my, my way into Adobe was not traditional. I have no training, formal training in product management. Um, like, I went to school for film, and I got, I'd started writing scripts and extensions and automating things in After Effects, getting really into stuff with um, motion capture, playing with things like the Kinect, and then I saw Adobe was working on this character animator product, and back when it was early beta when they first announced it, I got into the beta program and I was really loud. <laughs> and that, that meant, and I think Michelle's here, Michelle was looking for somebody to write the documentation for the very first release for, to teach the press how to use the tools. And that was my initial way into Adobe. That's great. Um, it's good to be loud, so we want to yes. encourage that of, of anyone. Um, so you did, you did a lot of motion design. We have another motion designer on our panel, and that is Jen Chu, um, who is the, the founder of Motion Sickness. So we're going to see her reel now. Fire when the strobe hits convention just let out oh oh my god l l l i guess they just let anybody into the ocean nowadays hey cindy girl why did you come over here get comfy and we can just nest flicks and chill <laughs> if you know what i mean wink wink too fast. That was way too aggressive. I saw that line on Fender. I'm sorry. Are we live? Uh, yeah. Are we live? Hello, hey. everyone. We are hey, live. Chew, are, are we live? Yeah, yeah, we're live. <laughs> we gotta work on that. Uh, I'm sorry. Chewy, are we live? Yeah, Chew. Yes, we're are live. Are we live? Are we live still? Yeah, I think so. Uh, I was kind of looking forward to going off the air. <laughs> I, I 
first only knew you as Chewy until a couple days ago. That's yeah, what I that, thought you looked me. like. <laughs> um, I love your reel because it shows all this VFX stuff that you do and motion design and, and some character anime work. So I wonder if you could talk about, like, you, you're spread across all these different things that you're doing. Yes, so I do a lot of things. <laughs> I think just creatively, I'm just kind of, I like to work on a bunch of things at the same time. I, I, I don't know if it's just how my creatively I'm kind of like, I get bored of one thing um, if I'm doing something for a long time. So in terms of my background, I was actually a motion designer on like the Dr. Phil show for so many years. And I was just like, wow, I'm doing the same crappy, boring thing. Well, sorry, my former <laughs> people. <laughs> but yeah, I just got, I kind of just got bored and that's when, um, with a few other people, I co-founded Motion Sickness because just we wanted to do more things creatively because we did have other skills. Um, we were able to do visual effects and everything that you see in the real, um, it's not like I did all of that myself. I always work with a team, but our team is super small. Like I think on average our projects are like no more than like five people. Um, so I do have like a large hand in, in a lot of them. Um, yeah, that's it. And then <laughs> I came across, so I, I actually love animation and I love making things move. My thing is though, like I, do, I actually don't enjoy drawing, but so I'm more of like a keyframer, I'm a designer, I, I do a lot of editing and visual effects compositing. And I always loved character animation, but Forget it. I, I don't want to draw frame by frame. Like it's just character design is just not my strong suit. So when we came across character animator, that just made my life so much easier in a way. And it, it opened up so many more possibilities that I wasn't willing to try because I was like, I don't want to do that. I'm not a character animator, I don't want to do it. But then when character animator came across, I'm like, oh my God, this is my dream. I always really did want to do it. I just didn't want to actually do the traditional route of doing it, <laughs> if that makes any sense, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Well, so since I'm the one who pitched the panel, I'll, I'll just go ahead and say, and I, I don't think it's any um, mystery, really. I think there's been lots of media about the fact that women like in many different industries, and animation's no different, have tended to be underrepresented. But more recently, in the last few years, you're hearing more and more about the women that are doing animation and all the different projects that they're working on. And when I started working on the character animator team, I saw something vastly different than I'd seen before, which was that we had tons of women in pre-release and yes. giving us tons of feedback and really um, participating. And so I got excited about it because I'm a woman. And, um, and I just thought it would be fun to get together with all the cool women I'd met on Character Animator. But I don't know about any of you. Do you see any, anything there? I mean, it's just a... This industry is still male dominated, so I mean, in my personal background, um, I, you, I mostly worked with men. <laughs> I mean, Me too. Yeah. I think that's shifting, I and mean, I think women in animation is a group also that's really working hard to um, close this gap. There was some interesting research with the, um, with the gender balance of graduates from animation programs versus the gender balance in the actual industry, and they're completely inverse. So they're trying to figure out what's happening to those women who are studying animation and then not going into the profession. Like, is there some gap, you know, gap that we can bridge by being mentors or by just paying attention to that? Um, and they're doing some really interesting work in that regard. For myself, frankly, I always forget that I'm a woman in animation. I'm like, I'm just a person in animation and I love all the people around me, but, but it is interesting to, to look at that balance. And when I first started, it was me and a bunch of guys. And frankly, every, you know, I think a lot of the animators got into animation because they loved comics. And comics, when I was younger, were all boys. You know, there weren't comics for girls. So it was kind of this, it, it was natural for it to develop in that way. But I think we're gonna see some shifts um, in the not too distant future in that regard and um, maybe it will be a little bit more encompassing um, but it's a it's in in my experience certainly in my company and in the people that I know it it is certainly a kind 
uh, little segment of the entertainment industry for the most part. So get into it if you, if you like it, just do it. Yeah, definitely. Um, that reminds me of two things. We have another panel tomorrow, and it is a comic illustrator who's bringing his comic illustration style to life using Character Animator. That's cool. um, so that was a nice segue to that. But I also wanted to mention one other thing before we go, which is that down at the Adobe booth, if you come by, um, the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children is there. They're demoing um, a lot of the different things I do, but they're also looking for animators. Um, they need some animators, so any of you aspiring animators out there, go by, um, have a talk with them, or even just go on their website and you can find their job description that they're looking for. But our time is up. We have to go. It looks to me like there's still some swag, and I'm guessing if you go by and see the swag man, he will give you something. <laughs> Thank you so much, and thanks to all of our panelists. Thank you.